I'm just going to start things off by setting the scene really. A lot of you have been working with us and I'm not going to go into great detail about the national uh, scene but what I would like to talk about is waiting uh, because you know, we, we're going to talk about the patient flow guidance later but actually all the things we're trying to do is about reducing waiting for our patients and waiting isn't passive, it really isn't passive whether you're young, middle-aged or old, particularly if you're old. Any time you go off track with the improvement you're trying to make is come back to this. Patient's time is the greatest currency in healthcare. A lot of you will have heard of someone called Brian Donan, who's a great friend of ours. And Brian coined the phrase, if you had a thousand days left to live, how many of those would you choose to spend in hospital? We often normalise the abnormal. Uh, and one of the things Brian did do is he created this video uh, based on the principle of the last thousand days. Everyone in this room has a number above their head, and that's the number of days you have left on this planet. And uh, Brian created this video, so I'm just going to play it. It's only 60 seconds long. Hopefully the technology... Day's almost over, the sky's about to show her The first glimpse of gold over Waking up dreams and thing is I don't know why things that I felt so concerned with just let go Drift with the breeze. I've been running around looking for answers, and all of these days there still ain't enough. Like the moonlit late plains, that the questions just hang. All I need is time with your love. I've been running around looking for answers, and all of these days there still ain't enough. There ain't enough. Time with you love. Ain't enough. Time's important and you've got to remember every time you're at work, think about that. I want to come back to this picture. Uh, and this picture is my colleague, Lisa Riley. She's with her husband who also works in the health service. Uh, to their right is Lisa's dad. This was her wedding day a year ago, and this is how many days he had left to live. Now, the reason why I'm playing this is um, I interviewed Lisa with my colleagues earlier on this week. And as part of her interview, she talked about her story and how she'd taken the concept of patient's time and the last thousand days. So her dad's name is Richard Hood, he's 62. She went on a honeymoon. Two weeks later, she got a phone call from her mum. Uh, Richard had been to the doctors with a knee complaint. The GP spotted that he had bulbous fingers, which is a sign of lung cancer. So he was diagnosed. But Lisa felt that her father, Richard, very fit bin man, uh, he'd probably have surgery, chemotherapy, but, you know, he'd have a chance of making it. What happened then was letters got lost. <laughs> Blood tests were taken. The results were lost. So a delay, patient's time. Then what happened is he was due to go to theatre for a biopsy to decide the type of treatment he needed. So he got to the hospital, got gowned up. There was no bed. They came back the next day. There was no bed. Came back the next day, there was no bed. And it went on and on. So weeks later, when there was a bed, uh, Richard's uh, prognosis was... Uh, not solvable. Uh, he lasted and put a brave fight up against it, uh, but from Lisa's point of view, she felt, what if? She felt, what if one person in one hospital had challenged the decision about, we're gonna keep a patient in for a little bit longer, <coughs> just in case? What if one person had had the bravery to escalate one decision? Uh, she thought to herself, what if? And a big point here is, you know, her mother's broken, a 14 year old son was crying, but her thing is trying to get the message across, which really made a struck a chord in me, it's not just the patients in front of you guys, it's the patients everywhere. Richard never saw an acute hospital, he's never on any particular record or something went wrong, he accessed hospice care um, and he died. And it struck a chord in me, so whenever you're thinking about this stuff, when you hear about the patient flow guidance, which we're going to talk about later. There's a copy on your desk. We've compiled this with the Royal Colleges. This is the stuff that saves patients' time. 